All right. Now, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be covering the final statistical test, which is also part of the correlation test here, yeah, by the way. And for this final statistical test, we are going to be looking at something known as the Spearman's rank correlation. In the previous video, we talked about the Pearson's linear correlation test. So both tests, the Pearson's linear correlation and the Spearman's rank correlation test are the same. In the sense, the purpose uh, for these tests are the same. They are to measure if there's a relationship between two variables. But how's the Spearman's rank correlation test different from the Pearson linear correlation test? So one very important thing that we have to understand is when you're doing a correlation test, we always have this paired data. So in my example here, we will take the water content of a soil, uh, water content of a soil area and the number of plant species in the area. Please do not memorize the values. It doesn't really matter. But we will plot something known as the scatter graph where uh, we will plot 28.3 is that value, 26.4 is that value, 21.5 is that value. You know, you know, we'll just put it on the graph and we will see whether there is a correlation. Now, is there a correlation? Yes. But does it seem linear though? Not exactly because it's kind of curving. So the moment it shows a correlation between the x and y variable, because the correlation here is as x increases, y decreases. But it's not exactly linear or the scatter graph doesn't show a very clear linear relationship. If it doesn't show a very clear linear, linear means straight line. If it doesn't show a very clear uh, linear or straight relationship between the x and y variable, that is when we can do the Spearman's rank correlation. So you will do the Spearman's rank correlation when the two data do not show a linear correlation in the scatter graph even though it implies there might be a relationship. The second reason you will do Spearman's rank correlation is when the data do not show normal distribution. For Pearson's linear correlation, the data must show normal distribution for X and Y. But for Spearman's one, please do not memorize this. Like, please do not, un you don't have to internalize this in detail, but I'm just drawing it out here. Imagine for the water content, I plot a histogram for just the water content. Is that a normal distribution of the water content? No, it's not because normal distribution means it has to be a bell-shaped curve. This is the opposite of a bell-shaped curve. Uh, so that is when, uh, if the data do not show normal distribution, we also do Spearman's rank correlation. And of course, same like Pearson's linear correlation test, that you must have five pairs of data or more. But more importantly, the reason why we also do Spearman's rank correlation is because it is quantitative and the data can be ranked. Ranked meaning to say you can number it from the highest to the lowest or vice versa, from the lowest to the highest. What do I mean by that? Let's look at it. So, over here, what you have is you have the ranking, for example, the water content of the soil and also the number of species. Remember, the water content of the soil was on the x-axis, the rank of species was on the y-axis. Doesn't really matter in this case which one you put on which axis, all right? But we have to rank it. Now, some students will, what does it mean by rank it? When you look at these numbers, okay, the 28, 26, 21 and such, you have to rank it from the highest to the lowest or lowest to the highest. Now, if you're going to choose to rank it from highest to lowest, you have to be consistent. What I mean by this is, let's take a look at this. If you rank it from highest to lowest for water content, you also have to rank it from highest to lowest for the number of species. So let's see. The highest uh, water content over here is 28, so that will be rank number one. 26 is the second highest, so it's rank number two, it's the second uh, in second place. And then 21 is rank number three, and then after that 18 is rank number four. Yep, but now we have a problem because for rank five, you have two 15s over there. So how are you going to rank them? Do both of them fall under rank five and five? The answer is no. What you do in this case is you have to put, because both of them can be respectively five and six. So you have to say that it's five plus six divided by two. So it's fair. So it's 5.5. 5. 
So it's a rank 5.5 in this case. Yes, uh, some cases the rank can be uh, in decimal places. That's okay. And then after that, for number 14, they have to be ranked because remember, the 15 and 15 were respectively rank 5 and 6, supposedly. So the 14 has to be, the two 14s have to be 7 and 8. But because they are the same number, 7 plus 8 divided by 2, you will get uh, 7.5. And then, of course, for this one here, 13 and 13, they are supposed to be ranked 9 and 10. You just do 9 plus 10 divided by 2, you get 9.5 for both of them. And... If you rank the water content from the highest to the lowest, you will also have to rank the number of species from the highest to the lowest. So look at the number of species. The one which is the highest is 12. So that's rank 1. Second one is 11, rank 2. A third one is 10, rank 3, rank 4. Uh, and then rank 3, but then... Look at the two nines. They are rank 4 and 5 respectively, but they are the same number. So 4 plus 5 divided by 2 is 4.5. So, and then after that, you put all the rank. And then what you do is you do something known as the rank difference. The rank difference just means 1 minus 10, 2 minus 9, 3 minus 8, 4 minus 7. You just do it like that and you get your values. Square the values and you will get your uh, total of D squared rank difference d's rank difference squared at the bottom now what happens if you rank it from lowest to highest it doesn't really matter because what will actually happen is if you if you ranked it from lowest to highest you will still get the same value by the way you will still get the value of 317 for both of them the rank difference for both of them will be the same and the total d square is also the same as you can see over here. Then what you just put in is, you will, you will then calculate your Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, which is Rs, and the formula is given in the exam. One minus, you know, that the one in the bracket. Make sure you put your values in the bracket correctly, and after that, you get a value of negative 0 0.92. And no matter whether it's Pearson's linear correlation or Spearman's rank correlation, the values of correlation coefficient will always be between negative 1 to positive 1. I did tell you that any values from positive 0 0.5 to 1.0 is a strong positive correlation. Anything from negative 0 0.5 to negative 1 is a strong negative correlation. 0 is no correlation and any values that I have not talked about is just weak correlations. So based on that scale. So state what the value of Rs shows about the relationship between the soil water content and the, and the number of species present. For one mark, you can just say it's a strong negative correlation, or you can just say as the soil water content increases, the number of species decreases. And you can also do it, you can also use the significance level because we have 10 pairs of data. Look, uh, and I also told you that in the critical value table, when you're looking at the critical value, you can ignore your negative value, negative 0 0.92. You just assume it's 0 0.92. And at 95% confidence or the significance level of 5%, uh, the critical value is 0 0.648. And uh, at 99% confidence, uh, significance level 1% is 0 0.794, 0 0.794. Your RS value is higher than the critical value of 0 0.648 because your RS value is modulus 0 0.92, ignore the negative. And therefore, there is a significant correlation between the soil water content and the number of uh, the number of species present over here. So this is an example of the way the question can be asked, asked for Spearman's rank correlation. So long story short, for the correlation test, if you plot a scatter graph, when you plot a scatter graph and there shows a linear, clear linear correlation, there are five or more pairs of data, the data is normally distributed, then you do something known as the Pearson's linear correlation.
But when you plot a scatter graph and the scatter graph does not show a clear linear correlation, there are five or more pairs of data and the data may not be normally distributed, then you do the Spearman's rank correlation. And of course, both data have to be quantitative, but for the Spearman's rank correlation, it can be ranked from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. That's an example of the way uh, we have to see these kind of questions. So I hope you understand when we have to do Pearson's linear correlation test and the Spearman's rank correlation test. And as a reminder, just to end it, correlation is not causation. Please remember that.